Good day everyone, this is Remy and this is episode 2 of the show so you know this is Saudi Arabia. In this show I'm going to focus on a specific topic and that topic is about the sports watching or the, uh, the sports industry in Saudi Arabia and my focus will be on three main topics and then the fourth topic will be about the human rights situation in Saudi Arabia along with the, with the three topics that I'm going to share with you. So the, the, the topic that I'm going to focus on is about the latest news that we have heard about the transfer of Benzema and uh, other players who are going to join him in the next few months to the Saudi Pro League. That's the first topic. So the first topic, as I said, is about uh, uh, Benzema joining Al Ittihad Club, one of the four biggest clubs in the country. And the second topic will be about the acquisition of the Saudi Public Investment Fund taking over the, the biggest four clubs in the country. The third topic will be about the merging of the PGA Golf Tours and the Live Golf Tours that was created by the Saudi regime through the uh, Saudi Public Investment Fund together to form, to make it even uh, a bigger golf tour around the world. And as I said, the fourth week will be focusing on human rights situation in Saudi Arabia. Uh, but first, first of all, before I start all of this, I just want to be uh, respect as I'm living in Australia. I want to acknowledge and pay respect to the to the elders, present and future of the owners of this land, and uh, it will always be, always will be, it was, and it will always be the land of Aborigines. And okay, I think we should start with the first topic. So I think most of the people here have heard the news that. Benzema have joined Al Ittihad, one of the four biggest clubs in the country. And before him was Cristiano Ronaldo. And the rumors, uh, if you follow up the news, was talking about other players are going to join Benzema in the upcoming few months for the next Saudi Pro League season. So the, the, the thing is that I want to share with you is not about how much Benzema is going to get paid, or how much value Benzema will add to the Saudi Pro League in the global station? Uh, sorry, in the global uh, uh, in the global image or uh, towards the global about Saudi Arabia, but it's more about one of the human rights that Benzema is getting uh, too much, if I would say that, than the other working rights that other people are receiving in the same country that he's uh, living at at the moment, which is Saudi Arabia. So my question to Benzema, or the message that I would like to send to Benzema, Cristiano Ronaldo, and the other players who are going to join in the next few months is that if you go down the street in Saudi Arabia, and if you approach one of the labor staff who are doing uh, construction jobs in Saudi Arabia, just try to approach them and ask them and see if they're getting the same working rights that you are getting from the Saudi regime itself or from the Saudi uh, public fund investment, uh, the, the Saudi investment fund itself. Because if you don't know that Karim Benzema, Cristiano Ronaldo or any other players who are going to join Saudi Arabia, those players, what I mean by is uh, the famous ones, those who can bring more attention to the world uh, fans of soccer. This message is about if you think that you are getting a fair and enough working rights in Saudi Arabia by being uh, someone who is doing a job and get something in return, and that's working rights that you're receiving is fair and equal, it's actually not true. 
as I said, when you go down the streets and you ask the people who are doing construction jobs, they will tell you the reality of the working rights in Saudi Arabia. Ask them about how they live. Ask them about how they are uh, being treated, either by the company who are sponsoring them or, the, or by the government itself when they come to, for example, to, to, to renew their passport or to have some sort of license to work or to travel around the country or within the city they are working at. Hear their stories and figure out why they are doing or why they are uh, uh, suffering from this situation. Why is this happening to them? Once you get the idea of that, you will realize that the reason that you are being treated that way and they are treated that way, it's because you build your own image, you build your own reputation, and they want to get benefit of that. And that's why you have been treated that way. And those people, they are just like, let's say, your family members. They are just like your family uh, relatives. They are just your friends in the neighborhood when you were in France or Portugal or any other country in Europe. They are just human beings. But the way they have been treated that way, because they couldn't reach or they couldn't have the chance to make their own reputation and image that make, make you have that privilege to have this type of working rights. And there's something funny about the working rights in Saudi Arabia. And what is actually, if you don't know that, I'm gonna tell you this right now in front of this camera live, that in Saudi Arabia, if you are a foreigner who is working in Saudi Arabia, the first year, you will have to pay about 200 riyals, Saudi riyals, every single month, only for you being a worker. If you have a family member in Saudi Arabia, you will have to pay the same amount every single month. That's for the first year. And the reason for that payment is actually not convincing, but unclear, unfair, and equal. That's for the first year. The second year is you have to pay 300 Saudi Riyals. You have to convert it to your own uh, country's currency. It might be a little amount, especially if you convert it to European uh, euros or to American dollars or even Australian dollars. It will be way less amount. In Australian dollars, by the way, 200 Riyals equals to almost 100 Australian dollars. 300 riyals the second year equals to about 150 Australian dollars, which is a lot of money. The third year, you will have to pay about 400 Saudi riyals, not just for only you, but also for each member of your family who's joining you in the country. Just for staying, they have to pay the same amount as you. And that's taken from your salary every single month so if you stay more than three years let's say four or five years you will still have to pay the 400 Saudi riyals for no reason you just have to pay and keep silent otherwise you'll be in big trouble so in your situation Karim Benzema if you don't know this and also Cristiano Ronaldo if you don't know this ask your financial advisor your private financial advisor and ask them about this. Probably you won't have to pay for that because you have your own reputation, you have your own image. That means if you say something against the government, the House of Saud regime, they will be affected very negatively and they will be in big trouble. So it's better for them not to charge you that amount. It's not that big for you. But for the other laborers who are doing construction jobs who have built this country, it means a lot. Just think of that. And please, please, be a voice for the, vo for the voiceless in Saudi Arabia. Okay, the second topic is about 
uh, which is interesting because uh, at the same time, the Saudi, uh, the Saudi Public Investment Fund, when the news went out talking about the transfer of Benzema to uh, transfer of Benzema to Al Ittihad, and he's going to be paid for like about two hundred million dollars per month, uh, sorry per season. At the same time, this news came out saying that the Saudi Public Investment Fund took over the biggest four clubs or took acquisition of the biggest four clubs in the country. And the biggest four clubs in the country are, first of them, the champion, the current champion, which is al Ittihad Club, where Benzema is. The second is Al-Hilal, uh, one of the Asian uh, Champions League champions. Uh, and Nasser, where Cristiano Ronaldo is, and Al-Ahli. Al-Ahli and Al-Ittihad, they are all located in Jeddah City, one of the, the second biggest city in the country. And Al-Hilal and Al-Nasser are located in Riyadh, the capital city of the country. So the funny thing about this public investment fund is it was actually created by the crown prince, who's famously known by MPS or Mr. Ponzo, Mohammed bin Salman. This fund is created by that regime, the House of Saudi regime, particularly by that person. And when you look at the public investment, you might think that it has to do something with the people. But actually, it has nothing to do with the people of Saudi Arabia. And no one, no one in Saudi Arabia except if you are a family member, the, the House of Saudi member, no one gets any penny or any cent from this fund and any other projects that's being controlled by the government, including Aramco. So no one from the Saudi, uh, no, one, no one in Saudi Arabia, I mean the citizens, get any penny or cent from these companies or from any other company. So... This Saudi Public Investment Fund is also, like if you keep trying or if you keep watching the news about what this fund is doing in a global stage, you will realize that they are trying to take over any major projects that has to do with entertainment and sport. So that's very clearly a sports portion. And another way to use the people's money which comes actually from the natural resources, from the oil, is to build up these sort of companies and use those companies as a cover-up to use the people's money. And tell the whole world that these companies are controlled by the government, which actually there is no government by the House of Saud regime itself that makes its own government and said, this is our country, this is our country. And they are using the people's money through those companies. Another funny thing that has something to do with the clubs and the acquisition of the House of Saud regime, uh, acquisition of the of the Saudi clubs or the sports clubs in Saudi Arabia, is Aramco. Aramco, the the, the company that is a hundred percent controlled by the House of Saud uh, regime, is also uh, going to take over one of the Saudi clubs called al Qadisiyah in the Eastern province. And also there is a club called ad Club, will be taken over by uh, ad Projects, project, uh, ad Develop Development and Project, or ad Development Project. This ad Project is actually controlled and established by the House of Saudi regime particularly by the MPS, the Mr. Bonso. Aramco has been there for a long time and is 100% a uh, House of Saud regime company. And there are other projects, companies that have been recently established by the House of Saud regime by MPS, and they are trying to take as well, or not trying, they will take care or they will take control of the other Saudi clubs. Just to claiming that they are trying to diversify the, the income sources 
or the profit sources for those clubs, but actually all of them lead to one owner, all of them lead to one person, and that person is the only one who is benefiting from all of this drama that you are seeing at the moment. And that person is none other than NBS. Okay. Another story that has something to do with the Saudi Public Investment Fund is the merging of the BGA Golf Tours and the LIV Golf Tours. So the story goes like this. Well, you can check up the, the links that I have provided under the description box uh, in this video and you can tell uh, uh, what's going on. So. The LIV Golf Tour is established recently by the Saudi regime. And when I say the Saudi regime, I meant the House of Saudi regime, in particular, MPS. Why this Live Golf has been established? Because they want to uh, compete against the PGA Tour, which is, uh, I believe that it's the biggest uh, golf tours in the world. So... What happened during the past two years is that the PGA Tours refused to be part of the Live Golf, which actually attracted uh, a lot of players. And technically, those players are actually the rich people in general. <laughs> so imagine that the Live Tour is promising you millions of dollars as prizes just to participate in their tours or competitions and the BGA can't afford that one way or another so the best way for both of them is to merge and who's gonna win bigger than the other one is the House of Saud regime not actually the regime more than the MBS who's building up his wealth by doing all of these and at one point in the next few years he will be declared the most richest person on earth why because he is acquiring and he has acquired uh, he has acquired most of the biggest companies in the world not just in sport wait for the other big companies in technology in uh, national resources in finance in uh, economy in uh, uh, tourism, in culture, in entertainment, in any other uh, and the other industries. So that's one of the reasons I believe that this MPS wants to reach and once he reaches all of that, then that's enough for him. Maybe he will keep that title for a few years and then he will give up on other stuff. Uh, like for example, just ignore uh, some industries and uh, make it just some, but I believe that he will keep it as long as he's still alive. So imagine that you die as the most richest person in the world, in assets, in cash, and in uh, whatever terms that out, that's out there in, financial, in, in finance and economics that can describe how much value and how much money you have. So that's one of the reasons that he wants to reach. Besides that, he also wants to change his reputation, his image. That's why you won't be surprised that this merge has happened finally. And it's a big win for them, for the House of Saudi regime, particularly for the for MPS. And it tells you about something about the rich people. Like when you think wisely enough, there are there are like bunch of rich people, especially who keeps making more and more money. They don't really care about human rights more than that how much powerful money can do to them. Because they got money already, they're rich already, but with that money they can make more money. Whether legally or illegally, what if you are in the Western countries or democratic and free countries, you will have to do yeah, you will have to do it legally. And they don't really care about if it's ethically done or unethically done. And that's where the point is. They focus more they, they focus more on if that money that they're receiving is legal, 
then go ahead. Who cares about ethics or an ethics uh, behaviors or morals? Nobody will care about those ethical stuff. So that's the mindset being made for a long, long time. So no surprise, eventually they will be bought by money and that money, having more money than the, what they have, but if they are merged with that uh, money source, which is MPS, using people's money in Saudi Arabia, definitely will get even more money and become more richer. Okay, so the fourth topic will be about the human rights situation in Saudi Arabia. So as I mentioned, those topics that I've just mentioned and shared with you, uh, all the links, all the resources, all the references that you need to double check whether if what I was saying is right or wrong, you can check them uh, for your own records, for your own research, for your own uh, uh, review, for your own reference in the uh, description box. I've bought as much resources as I could based on my research about those topics that I've just shared with you, including this topic, uh, the final topic, which is about human rights situation in Saudi Arabia. So, the general situation in Saudi Arabia when it comes to working rights, there is no working rights, or if there is a working rights in Saudi Arabia, it's going to be as simple as everyone has the right to work, Maybe they have added recently that uh, it doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman. As long as uh, you are over 18, you probably will have the right to work. But is there any details? Is there any uh, fairness, clear uh, uh, articles about how this the right to work is explained? In a simple way, in a simple, uh, in simple sentences or terms, to the people of Saudi Arabia, or even to the people who are uh, considered foreign workers, definitely not. And if there is a hundred percent, it's not applied. Or let's say maybe ninety percent is not applied because that ten percent will go for those people who represent. Uh, the country's image that the country is trying to use to change its reputation and image. And what I mean by this point is Cristiano Ronaldo, Benzema, and other uh, well-known players or uh, uh, influencers or uh, famous people in general who might, with one sentence, might change the whole image of Saudi Arabia and to a negative or a positive way. And uh, that's when it comes to work and rights in Saudi Arabia. As I said, human rights in general is still horrible. With the current reforms that they're trying uh, to make, I mean MPS is trying to make, which is actually focusing on the women's rights more than any other human rights. For example, freedom of speech. Freedom of speech in Saudi Arabia is actually prohibited. And trust me, Benzema, Cristiano Ronaldo, or any other player, player who has, who's going to join the Saudi Pro League in the next few seasons, or in the next few months for the next seasons, if one of the fans approaches you and you ask them about how's the situation in Saudi Arabia, how politics goes here, is why, why there is no freedom or, or democracy, they will tell you either one of these two things. They will change the topic, and talk about sports and how big fun they are about you. And the second, which 100, well, 99% they will do is they will defend the country. They will claim that we do have freedoms. We do have democracy. We do have human rights and all of these things. Look around you. Everyone is happy. Everyone is cheering for you. Everyone is enjoying their lives. That's what you see in public. But when they get back home, when they keep watching the news, when they look around, when they look at themselves, they will know exactly there is something wrong with human rights situation in Saudi Arabia. If that's one of that, that's the second thing. But the second option in that second point is they will keep silent. Otherwise, they will change the topic. 
or defend the government. If by mistake one of them said, well, I agree with you, there's something wrong with democracy, this particular person, definitely he won't be alone with you only. He will be surrounded by other people and he will be reported, even maybe by his family members or the family members or by friends, even close friends. And this particular person will be in big trouble just saying that there is something wrong in the country. And what's going to happen to them? If you don't know, if you can't imagine, I'm going to tell you what's exactly going to happen to them. They will find him in a few minutes. He will be disappeared suddenly. He will be in prison for up to five, ten years, maybe more. It depends on if he's a Sunni or Shia minority of that religious groups and his family members friends close friends will never know or hear anything about him they will knew that he or they have been disappeared suddenly and no news about them and if they kept telling about the government uh, if they kept calling for the government to help them out they will say go to this department or like for example go to the police department in that neighborhood or go to the other uh, interior minister uh, ministry department or go to the uh, working uh, ministry department go to this department go to that department and no one will tell you what exactly happened to them they will just direct you to go to the other department they have something uh, about that person and they will be in that situation these people will be in that situation, his family, their family members, their friends will be in that situation for years before they re, before they knew that he's imprisoned, he has been disappeared suddenly for more than one, two years or maybe a few months. It depends on uh, how he's been treated by the, by, by the government itself. So they will be disappeared for up to five, ten years just because of saying one word to you. And then when they get out, they will be traveling banned. They will be banned from traveling for up to 10 years, maybe more. And then they will be truly free, like if they plan to, to leave the country eventually. But that's up to them anyway. So that's what's going to happen. So what's going to happen to them when they are locked in prison all of these years? You can imagine whatever you can imagine of. Torture. Uh, lack of health care, lack of uh, 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 treating as human beings, uh, all types of torture you can imagine of. And they will live miserably just because they told you they're not satisfied with the human rights or with democracy or freedom in Saudi Arabia. And they were caught by one of the people who were surrounding him and reported them. Simple as that. Imagine that's how you live. Imagine women's rights. Imagine uh, people are being kidnapped and disappeared just because they have said some sort of this type of sentence. And that's the human rights situation in Saudi Arabia. And if you are LGBTQ community or the Shia community, these communities are minor communities you will be in even bigger trouble. Because if you are a Shia group minority, you, probably you will eventually be executed. And if you don't know, until now, the people in Saudi Arabia are getting executed as a punishment. Death penalties as punishment. That happens until now. And the death penalty in Saudi Arabia is by using swords, not by hanging not by injections or any other uh, modern uh, way of death penalty, by, but by SWAT. In Saudi Arabia, it's by SWAT. So the situation in general in Saudi Arabia is really, really horrible. It's still horrible. And if anyone thinks that, especially if you are from Europe or Australia or New Zealand or Canada or the US or any of the democratic and free countries and most developed countries, if you apply for a visa to visit Saudi Arabia and you think that you get it because, uh, and, took, uh, and when you apply for it and you get that visa within minutes, it's not because they respect you or they value you. No, they see you as 
a sheep who is going to borrow a lot of money for the house of Saud regime. Not for the people, not for its economy, not for anything else, but for the house of Saud regime, particularly for MBS. So that's what's going on in the uh, in the country, which is my country, unfortunately, Saudi Arabia. And these are all the news and updates that I wanted to share with you. You can look up at the uh, sources that I have provided in the description box below. And so you know, this is Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is the end of the episode. Uh, I really thank you and appreciate you if you shared that and if you send all of these messages to Benzema, Cristiano Ronaldo and other players who are going to join the Saudi Pro League in the few next months to join the Saudi Pro League season. And I hope I hope these players will make a change, will be the change and the voice for the people in Saudi Arabia and represent their voice and uh, demand the the freedom of speech, human rights, human rights, political uh, rights to be applied and exercised freely in Saudi Arabia, at least while they are there or when they leave the country after a few years. Uh, that's me, Remy. Until then, I'll see you soon. Take care and I wish you a good day.